first public speaking experiences was at Gettysburg College. I remember my knees banging together. So, so I'm much better <coughs> behind a, a podium than elsewhere. But I want to thank Janet and congratulate you. But thank you so much for the honor of coming today and for the opportunity um, you've given me or the gift to have, take some time to introspect and, and reminisce. Um, when I accepted the invitation, I thought this is uh, a simple task. Uh, this is a no-brainer, five minutes talking about the value of my education. Um, I get much longer talks all the time, um, and so I thought, oh, this would be easy. But then I started working on it, and I realized I was so wrong. First of all, problem number one, no slides. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me on that. Problem number two, I like to know what I'm talking about, and so I wanted a clear definition of a liberal arts education. So this wasn't too big a problem, I just did what my students do, I Googled it. <laughs> but the problem was 268,000 links, about 268,000 links in 0.13 seconds. Uh, so I did what my students do and stopped at Wikipedia. <laughs> so if anyone knows the Wikipedia definition, I think that. <laughs> Problem number three was the hardest, and that's how to frame my thoughts and my experience. And up until last night, I had an approach um, that was simply just frame it in my personal experiences, such as how as a freshman, and I hate to say it's 44 years ago this month, um, I came here wondering what I'd be when I grow up and entering this amazing world, uh, coming from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Some of you know E-Town. It's a tiny little place, a uh, good place to be from, uh, but a small world to come from. Um, or, or how I loved my first exposure to liberal arts education in Professor Lou Hammond's um, general education, they called it then, class. Um, the Western Civ, the foundation of our culture. And I mean, it was incredibly eye-opening. Or how I had a very forgettable, my worst class of all was modern European history. I gotta see. Don't tell me. <laughs> um, but how somehow in my postgraduate uh, experience, I regained some interest and knowledge of modern European history through starting with the novels of Dorothy Sayers to the autobiography of Vera Britton, and even. A few weeks ago on my Kindle, A Short History of Women, a novel that kept me in that loop. Or how um, Gettysburg rescued history for me as well through two stunning classes that I had the opportunity to take. Professor Guerra's History of Science. Wow. I, you know, I see Debbie up there nodding. <laughs> what a great course. And Sam Mudd's History of Psychology, two, you know, absolutely fascinating uh, experiences. But then I have to confess another confession: I dropped art history. So there's a gaping hole in my liberal arts education. I dropped it when the first 8 a.m. class started with the words "lights out, first slide," and my eyes. <laughs> and for how Grace Kenny kept our eyes open and our eyes on the prize, which wasn't always winning the game, but on those bus rides to the away games before and after practice, keeping us focused on our education as well. Or how Mary Margaret Stewart became my idol in teaching me 18th century English literature. Wow. And, and this in spite of the not too few times in the 1 p.m. class, 
I ended up with sloppy, soggy notebook pages due to my post-lunch state of slack job droolery. <laughs> <laughs> or how my Gettysburg education prepared me for five for success in five jobs within a year of graduation. <laughs> uh, so now, now, you know, last night, I mean, this isn't really crystallizing for me the value of, a, of the liberal arts education. I realized I had much stronger evidence that came to me in the lives of a dozen Gettysburg graduates with whom I reunited this summer. So this was our reunion year for many of us, but we got together this summer. So let me enumerate. Jean Smith, an English major, Gettysburg, who went on to study English literature, but then went on to teach English to generations of high school students, but then went on to become interested in the, neuro, the neurobiology of learning, and is now continuing to teach, but teaching challenged learners. Uh, you know, what a progression. Marty Taylor, bio major. Um, her interest in learning and learning styles led her to become a biology instructor and later a teacher of teachers at Cornell. And now her intro bio student guide is a top seller. Bonnie Heilig Muller, a psychology major, now a school psychologist with post-retirement goals of hands-on therapy for individ troubled individuals. Kate Podiger, a raging, not a raging, a feminist. <laughs> but that led her to leadership roles in Planned Parenthood. And subsequently, she's had another second career as a development officer at Cornell. Emily Foster, a biology major. At least I got to sit with all these women for two days. I mean, gastroenterologist and a clinician scientist educator. Mm -hmm. Susie Robinson, health and PE major here, has lived a life of a public service as a probation officer counselor. Katie Garvin Scalise, another bio major, but she's a high school guidance counselor in state college. Helen Martyr, oh, Helen, health and PE major, she taught PE, she was an athlete. She became an educator and ultimately the head of independent school. Charlotte Lentz, an economics major, was a career Army intelligence officer. Sally Sanford, health and PE major, continues to teach PE and also coaches several sports teams. Bev Eck, biology major and high school bio teacher. At our little reunion, after hearing her tell her riveting stories of Columbine, I was convinced that she was the coolest head and responsible for saving dozens of lives that day. So this, the 12th member of this reunion group, what I? And as for me, it's the lives of these remarkable women, the thousands of lives they've touched, that tell the enduring story of liberal arts best. The evidence I provide for the case is that my liberal arts education still touches my life. And I think it lends credibility to my enduring life questions. What will I be when I grow up? Right now, English professor, molecular biologist, depending on the postdoc I can get. So Gettysburg has meant a lot to many of us and to those that we encounter. Thank you, Jim.